I'm Wayne Howe, and welcome to What's in the Neighborhood. We're here today at Mainline Products, located in the village of Luck Mills, Maine, right here on Route 26. Now let's go inside and meet the owners. Hi again, I'm here with uh, the owners of Mainline Products, uh, Rick and Ellen Whitney. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Wayne. Good morning. Now I understand that uh, you give bus tours uh, of your store and your factory. Yes. The Generally speaking, about what, six or eight times a year, buses stop and okay. want to go for a tour. Okay. So could we get a tour today? Sure. That'd be great. I'm the one who usually starts it, so. Welcome to Mainline Products. <laughs> We've been in business since 1979. Um, Rick and his dad started the business with the idea of making Maine products and selling them wholesale and retail. Uh, originally, they started out with lamps. Um, they bought uh, a closeout from Cornwall Products and uh, started making lamps and started doing fairs and, and craft shows originally. And then uh, as they were doing those things, they began to get a little bit of wood products involved in that process. And, and over the years, We've evolved kind of out of the lamps because we actually sold through them and more into the wood products business. So we have gone from a catalog like this to start through the years. The this was done by the Bethel Citizen to a catalog like this for the wholesale products. And uh, we are. Um, started out in Bethel on Main Street uh, in Rick's barn <laughs> at, on Lower Main Street actually what's now Bethel Kitchen, kitchen Design, design. Uh, and then moved up the street to a rental and then further up the street when we bought the place that we now have just the gift shop um, where we also live. Um, we bought this building that you're in right now in 1997 so we've been here for close to 21 years. Um, over the years, our best selling product that we got in the probably early 80s was the weather stick. Uh, it really works. They're a type of tree that's native to New England and they bend down when it's gonna be bad weather and up when it's gonna be good. Um, we also make crates and wooden boxes which I'll show you later in the tour. And then in the 90s, we came across somebody doing moose drop jewelry who did it exclusively for us. And um, we do earrings, we do keychains, and we do mooseltoe. Um, we also do the fudge, which is cooking right now. It's not quite ready to pour yet, but I will show it to you eventually. And am I forgetting anything else? Well, we do sell the weather sticks all over the world, and we've had them translated into French. We've also had, uh, I think, Danish. Uh, One yeah. time we had Danish ones, and so we do ship those all over the world. And it's our number one seller. My fudge timer is going off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to start the tour now. Um, the first thing I want to point out to you is we do a lot of shipping, obviously, because we wholesale to stores all over the country. Um, we use boxes that have, we recycle boxes is what I want to say. Out in our store, in our retail store, we have maple syrup products. The company that does those syrup products contacted us quite a few years ago and said, we have all these boxes that we just send away and burn and incinerate and wondered if you could use them. So what they do is stack them on a pallet that tall, run a strap around them, and when they've got the pallet full, they call us and we have a truck pick it up and bring it to us and we reuse their boxes that they use, that they get their bottles in and their jugs for our crates and boxes. And they're actually just perfect size because they fit pretty much all the boxes and crates we do in a case pack. So we don't have to buy very many boxes originally made, just a couple. 
Um, and if you look back this way, you'll see all these little boxes. This is stuff, I know it looks like a mess, but these are boxes that we got product in with. And we either reuse them to ship smaller things or we use them for, cut them down and use them for cardboard, for packing, or um, sometimes when it gets Christmas time, people just need boxes for what they're buying in the store. So it works out well. So I'm going to take you out to the loading dock where this, these pallets and all this lumber is brought in to start. Um, part of our business here now or is shared by our son who uh, has a business called Mountain Mowing and More. They share our loading dock with us and share our backyard here with all of their lawnmowers and plows and trailers. And right now they're working on a lawnmower or some kind of a piece of equipment. I guess the trailer, they're fixing their trailer here. But we receive all of our UPS or FedEx shipments go out this door and anything coming in by a truck comes in this door. And right now we have this pallet of boxes for Sid Wainer which is for, I guess, for fresh cranberries, because that's what it says, um, that we have two and a half pallets of these waiting to be picked up next week. So they're sitting out here. This is one of them. The other's in the store. The boys not just do not just do lawn care and stuff. They also make some products for us in their downtime, which uh, right there is a sample of the birdhouses that they've partially made just waiting to be trimmed. So they brew the birch birdhouses with us, and they also do the weather sticks, which I'll show you in just a moment. Um, if you want to follow me, this is where all the lumber and everything that comes and goes out of the building work go is. Oh, sorry. This is the other pallet that's waiting to go. And in what was uh, at one time, I believe, walk-in coolers here, we keep... Uh, some of the longer, bigger boxes that we use for shipping our tall displays. We store the paper we use for packing, which comes from the Sun Journal. Um, every two or three times a year, we go down and buy their end rolls and use that for our packing, and that's kind of a recycle thing, too, because then they don't have to throw those end rolls away. And being that we sell unfinished wood products, the, the unprinted paper is what we need to pack with because if you use the printed paper the ink comes off on the wood so um, you can hear our uh, air compressor in the background there this is where we keep all, a lot of the lumber that we just got in and this corner here is where the boys do the weather sticks and work on the birdhouses this used to be the meat cooler when it was a grocery store but as the air cooler is still up there. Um, they make the birdhouses and the weather sticks here. Uh, weather stick making season is past the first part and now they're into the part where they're doing the um, sanding and drilling of the stick. Um, the birch birdhouses are made with the byproduct of the uh, couple of birch, a uh, couple of dowel mills in Maine. And they start with these slabs and cut them and angle them and eventually get them to this point where they're, this one's not quite done, but almost. It's missing some trim. Um, usually there's somebody here doing weather sticks, but he's not here today. <laughs> so from here, we go to where Rick does most of the cutting of all this wood that gets cut into the pieces that we need for the boxes. Um, most all of the boxes and crates you're going to see from here forward, all those pieces are cut right here, pretty much right on this table saw. Um, the boys have table saws here that they use for their birdhouses. Um, right now we're working on a 500 piece order for uh, truffle boxes they're called for Sid Wainer. <laughs> That's the box at complete but one of the things we do here is we can print on the wood in most cases it works well. 
we have a uh, machine here that's called a hot stamping machine. And as you can see, Rick's putting a piece of foil on it. The color, you can be any color, any one color. But when he does that, there goes, there is the logo for the truffle boxes. Um, we can do that on many different things. This is basically a die that we, you have made out of magnesium that gets attached to these machines. The machines heat it up, and when you put the foil on and come down on it, the, it stamps the color into the wood. So we do that for these folks. We do it for ourselves, for our own gift baskets out in the store, or so a lot of our whole s customers that do gift baskets will buy these that say a gift for you or a gift for Maine. We do several different states. We do New Hampshire, Vermont, several different companies that get them. Um, it's a dry process. It, it's immediately dry as soon as you stamp down on it. And like I said, we're working on 500 of these right now. And over here, Tom is making the boxes as we speak. <laughs> So he's using, um, we use pneumatic nailers for that, and um, oh, what I was going to say too, I usually tell folks, these workbenches, if you look closely at them, do you remember this used to be a grocery store? These were the three sales counters that were out front as, at the grocery store when it was that. We just took them, put some plywood on the tops, and made them into workbenches. So we got three stations here that are workbenches now. Um, and obviously, store the tools. So. We have the display from the grocery store. Oh, and yeah, in the store, when you look around, as we, if we go around the store, you'll see there's two or three uh, cooler that used to be coolers that are now displays. So. Um, the Oh, sorry. Um, if you look around, you see all kinds of half-made crates up on the shelves. Um, we do that because we need to save space. So we make the bottoms of all of the crates and store them on the shelves. And as people order them, we take them off. These guys will put the uh, sides on, and then out they go. This machine here is what puts the bottoms of the crates together. You put the wood in right side up. So we have about 40 different sizes of boxes and crates in our, in our uh, stock catalog. Um, most of the crates, the smaller crates, are used for gift baskets or packaging or people with soap or s candle products. Um, this particular crate right here, we just sold 130 of them to a wine company that sells wine, and they put two wine bottles in them and make a gift pack out of them. I just picked that pallet up yesterday. They buy s several sizes, but they like that one the best. These, we also make larger size crates, which for store display or uh, and some people put them in their homes to keep their books in, I've heard. But um, we have a lot of stores that buy pr these from us to use in their stores for stacking and raising things up. Um, these are not the only displays we make. I you take you back out into the store. I can show you some of the other displays. But if you swing around here, you'll see parts and pieces of them stacked here. We have the different size bins of the different displays that we make stored here ready to go when someone places an order and we've gotten quite busy with the store display section these are some already done birdhouses that are waiting i have a purchase order coming in for 72 so these are going to be going out shortly at least as far as i know so um over here is where all the packing happens that sends the products out um I just forgot one more thing. The only lamp we still make is the wall pinup lamps, which are complete out in the store, but this is the base. 
there's a local guy who, take, who takes our lumber and cuts them out for us and stains them. So it's not, uh, we don't actually make the bases in here, but it's the lumber that we get, and he takes them to his home, and he has a machine that he can cut them out with. So we kind of do that with him, and then um, some of the store displays I'll show you later are actually made by my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, sister. So this is my packing area. I'm Debbie and I do most of the packing. Debbie also, who's out front now, does a lot of lamp making for us and helps with crates. It's, when you work here, you do pretty much everything. <laughs> you don't just do one thing. So um, this is going FedEx. We use FedEx ground for all of our smaller shipments, and we use uh, various trucks for our bigger shipments. Ross Express is one of them, uh, and uh, East, East Branch is another one that's a main related. This is the rest of the 200 piece order since, uh, yeah, actually we were at Gould Academy recently for a rotary pancake breakfast and we noticed they had one on their, up on their shelf. Because <laughs> they get their cranberries from Sid Wainer. Well, Sid Wainer is a food distributor and they're up here every week with their truck. You'll, if you look around, you'll see their truck if you pay attention. They come and pick up their own orders, so. Uh, we'll be filling the rest of this pallet with the boxes Tom's working on right now. So, and plus more. We do a lot of our own printing here as we showed you over there with that big blue machine. But this particular box is too big of an area for us to print, so we actually source that printing out to a screen printer locally called Grona McGurn. And he's done these boxes for us probably ever since these people started ordering for probably 15 or 20 years. Uh, occasionally we have a, another type of logo that someone sends us that we maybe can't use on that machine and we ask Grona McGurn to help us out with those and they're pretty good at it. So as far as our retail store goes, um, one of the best moves we ever made was in 1996 we decided to sell fudge. Um, that was before we even had this building so it started out up in Bethel. Um, we being frugal folks, found a way to find a used kettle because these kettles new when you invest in this company are I think around 10 grand with everything that comes with it. But anyway, we bought a used one. Um, so we make fudge year round. Um, in the summertime, I usually have about 20-ish, 20 to 22 different flavors. I cut that back in the winter because obviously winter time is slower. And in the winter, it's harder to keep it fresh. But what we do is make a whole bunch of it and freeze it. So in here, you'll see a bunch of slabs of fudge that we keep frozen so that when we need it, we pull it and it's fresh. Um, we make it in the kettle. The kettle makes about 35 pounds at a time. It comes in a case, which if you swing back over here, these are the cases of fudge. I've actually used a lot of it this summer, so we're getting down there. Um, the fudge takes about 35 to 40 minutes to cook, and then it's time to pour. And you obviously need two hands to do it, so you pour it out, and I know about how much is going to fill a pan, so I know when to stop after 20 years of doing it. And that's a pan of plain chocolate. That's about eight pounds, I think? Six, six pounds per pan, give or take, give or take. Um, but I'm also going to make chocolate nut today. And I'm also going to make uh, Rocky Road out of the chocolate. Rocky Road has walnuts and marshmallows. So you kind of spread your marshmallows out across it. And uh, take the walnuts and put them in there. My hands much. And then you push it down in. And there's your rocky road. 
And uh, I make, yesterday I made pumpkin, so we're getting ready for fall. And uh, more blueberry cheesecake, which is a popular summer. And uh, we also do a couple that we created of our own called Sunday River and Mount Abram, which I also made yesterday as well. And this here is a, was an oven, I think, when this place was a grocery store and had a little restaurant. We do not use it as an oven, but it's a great place to store the fudge for the night while the fudge sets. So it's got, uh, oh, probably eight or ten cans of fudge in it right now that I made yesterday that we will put in some shrink wrap here and put in the freezer to uh, save for future use. Uh, Debbie filled up the fudge counter this morning with all the fresh stuff, and all the extra stuff will go in the freezer. Now, you people at home can't uh, smell this, but it, it certainly has a nice, rich chocolate smell to it. Oh, and this is the, well, a lot of you at home have known us to do an open house at Christmas time. This is the fudge that gets put on your ice cream. And we, uh, we melt it down to be a little bit, probably a little bit uh, runnier than this coming out of the kettle so that it spreads on the ice cream better. But uh, you all know it's usually the second weekend in December. Uh, this year we're waffling as to whether it will be the second or third because of the way the dates are falling. It would be like the ninth if we did it, or eighth this year. So we're thinking, but keep your eyes open because we'll have it out on the sign and we'll have it in the Citizen and on Facebook. And I have been here for the, <laughs> for the free Sundays, not much Sundays, uh, Numerous times over the years. We look forward to your, vis uh, your, your visits all the time. And uh, we also enjoy doing that open house because a lot of people kind of refer to that as almost like the uh, Maliacic Day of the wintertime. It's a time when people get together and kind of welcome in the uh, holiday season. And you can't do it outside like Maliacic Days in July, but uh, they get together here in the first part of December and visit and shop and have a good time. A large part of our business outside of the boxes, the weather sticks, and the birdhouses has become store displays that, um, as tried to explain earlier, we go to trade shows and sell to other stores. Um, at the trade shows, we uh, have a display set up, and we started out with just these little floor bins here, which some people call them dump bins, but they're bins you can put like stuffed animals in or uh, you could put candles and fur pillows, whatever you little stuff you have. But that kind of escalated into, I think we have about eight different versions of this now. And these we make right here. But this type of unit here, my brother-in-law and sister make. Um, they make the roofs and the, the units. These units are very flexible um, because they fold up flat. So people can put them in their car or in a box and ship out easily. That's the corner unit. But they have hinges that allow them to be folded in any direction. So they're very um, flexible. They set up like this. They make shelves that go on them and you can put them anywhere on it. Um. <laughs> so. This unit can be this right behind you, too. It folds up like a square. And you put the shelves on it. And we created a little spinner base for it that customers kept asking for. And voila, you have a spinner rack. But this rack can be this rack here. So it's very flexible. We also make a smaller version of it that can be on the floor or be up on a table. A lot of craft people rent eight-foot tables at shows, and they want something that will raise their product up. This sets right up on the table. They get it and get a couple of shelves, and they're good to go. This is the unit here. Um, like I said, it folds in different directions. You can make a new display out of the, the same display by just making a different shape. And we've had pretty good success with these because they are flexible. They fold up flat for the people who want to transport them in their vehicles, like us. We uh, take our whole trade show, booth, trade show booth in a Chrysler Pacifica. 
Um, and if you look on my Facebook page, you can see pictures of our trade show booths. And you'll see there's a heck of a lot of stuff there. But it all comes down to being very portable. And all these just come apart with nuts and bolts and wing nuts. And they're very easy to move around. So uh, the lumber we get to make all these, by the way, comes from Hancock Lumber one mile down the road. They're very, we buy it by the pallet in different sizes. And they have a uh, truck with a uh, forklift that they'll bring and deliver it out back and bring it on the loading dock that we showed you earlier. And from the loading dock, we take our pallet jack and move it around the building, which you could have witnessed yesterday if you were here. <laughs> pushing and pulling on pallets. So the other part of our business is the retail store, which we're starting at the back of. But when we bought this building, it was a grocery store. So we retained a few pieces, such as this one with all the Moxie products. Um, that was a uh, uh, Prados cooler at the time. And when we get out to the sweatshirts and t-shirts, you'll see another one that was a Prado's cooler. And of course, all this shelving here was grocery store shelving, but we've found a way to use it for uh, ourselves, for our products. The gift baskets, obviously we make our own crates out back, but we try to focus on a lot of main products. And um, the gift baskets are a great product for us year-round retail. And of course, a really good product at Christmas time. They make a great gift. You take our main foods that we get, the jams and jellies, and clam chowders and maple syrups, and you can make yourself a nice little gift pack. Some of them, we put some of the balsam fir products that we sell. These are made in Auburn, Maine. Um, all the food products, except for one that we get, come from Maine. And let's see. We have focused as much as we can on Maine made products. This actually is a Vermont product, but it's a made in the USA soaps. These signs here, a gentleman from Norway, Maine makes these. These are nice wood product signs. Um, the, some of our products aren't made in Maine, but they're made in the USA. We have a nice line of pocketbooks here from Vermont. We also have socks that are made in the USA. I also try to carry a lot of local authors' books. Um, I have books by Bob Remington. I have books by Norma Solway. And I have books by Sandra Morgan, who used to be a Martin, I believe. She just wrote a book. I um, also have books by Stephen Remington, or did. Um, those are my local authors. And then we have some other main related books um, that we sell here as well. The bells straight ahead here, those are from Round Pond, Maine. But these are the socks and pocketbooks. And this gentleman is from New Hampshire that makes these products. The, the, uh, the wooden postcards are our product actually right here. Actually, Jewel Clark did a lot of the artwork for us on these. There's the uh, eagle that she did for us that we put on the uh, wooden postcards. And we wholesale these to a lot of stores as well as sell them in our own. And speaking of that, we've also got taffy boxes down here, which several of the designs were done by Jewel. <laughs> she, uh, I believe she did my deer, my m this moose. Um, she did this buck back here. And she did some others that we maybe don't have out here right this minute, but horses, I think, wolves, um, the dogs. I think you did the dogs for us. So, yeah, this will probably pick me up if I can, but yeah. So, yeah, um, we sell a lot of these taffy boxes to a lot other stores for resale. The bigger ones have a pound of taffy in them, and then we print out back on the back the facts about Maine, which has been a good selling point for them. We sell a lot of these to Zebs in New Hampshire. We sell a lot of these to Kittery Trading Post and um, several stores in Bar Harbor, but all over Maine, but those in particular. 
Well, we're both close to this microphone now, so I'm just going to say, so when you no. take these boxes to trade shows, you print, sometimes you print other... We have other states. Yeah, we'll put New Hampshire, Vermont, wherever we're, whatever area we're in. When we go down to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, we bring ones that say Tennessee, Kentucky, North Carolina. We try to focus, but actually we bring ones from all over the U.S. because that show that we do every November People come from all over the United States to buy there. So that's how we get a lot of our out of the East Coast area customers is from that show. So um, yeah, we take these and display them, bring one of each. And we have a pound of tappy in this one and then we put a quarter pound in the smaller boxes. So those are made right here. And some of these are sometimes postcards too. Right? Yes, exactly. Um, they can be postcards or taffy boxes. We use the designs on both. Um, so it works out well. I did. We've already said Jewel did a lot of this artwork for us. Yeah, she's found but a way to ask questions now. Yeah. <laughs> she can just get right I up guess next to me. I have because I missed, I couldn't keep up with what she was saying. I know. So I've got to go back and get some. But this way I can talk with her. This is our uh, weather stick shelf with some of our moose drop pro products. And then <laughs> we do sell some duct tape products. Um, the duct tape wallet was originally st made by my son Andy when he was in high school. He's now 29, but he doesn't make them anymore. Debbie learned how to make them, actually. Um, and Elsie's been making all of the ties up in the Bethel store as something to keep them busy. But we sell these to other stores, too. It's kind of a joke thing, but kids use these wallets. Uh, my, that's how come we started selling them, is Andy was making one, made one for himself. And he got it out of his pocket one day, and we're looking at it, and we're saying, what is that? He said, it's my wallet. And we're like, you made that? And he said, yeah. So he said, you know, Andy, we could sell those if you wanted to make some. So he said he would, and then Rick came up with the um, packaging ideas, and had no, Smith & Town, actually, in Berlin, does all of our printing. They print up the packaging for the weather sticks and those. And um, I think it's brilliant. And <laughs> we've been selling those duct tape wallets ever since. So, and then the younger son wanted to participate. He was four years younger, and he said, "What can I make?" So we had thought, "Well, why don't you make a tie?" So for a while, Danny made the ties, and Andy made the wallets. But now it has, of course, focus to our employees that make the ties and wallets. They don't any longer make them, but. It was originally there. Now, ideas. I am close to the microphone now. So, where do you make all the weather sticks? They make them out back in that corner where we went through where the birdhouses and stuff were. So, they, they get the weather sticks and peel them in the spring and then they sand them and drill them and then we basically buy them from them and we package them. And do they, um, are they, what kind of wood are they? Type of fur. A type of fur? Okay, I won't ask any more. <laughs> but so, but all the weather sticks are produced right here. Absolutely, yes, oh, they are. They didn't used to be, but they are now. Uh -huh. Years back, when we first started selling them, it was Steve White from Sunday River Inn. Actually, you got the idea from somebody and was making them. And had his college kids making them, and he made them for quite a few years, probably up until about twelve years ago, maybe, and then. That he had a local older guy that was doing it. Actually, this lives right down the road here. But uh, and then he did it for probably ten years. But then he wanted to be done. He was up in the, his age and getting old and didn't like traipsing out in the woods. So they both suggested that the boys take it over as part of their business because they were starting out with their business and it would be a good thing that they could fill in in the spring with before their lawn mowing season got busy. So they can go out and cut trees and. They have made arrangements with a local landowner that they can go on his land and he showed them where he'd like them to go and take the trees and in exchange they either send him something at the end of the year in money or in lately they've been doing work in exchange for it, uh, doing some bush hogging for him and stuff on some of his roads. So he, uh, he has lots of land and they need a lots of trees and he's happy to get rid of those trees because they're kind of a... The, the trees are kind of a what weed, I guess you'd call it, in among the nice pines. So if you clear out all the little trees, it lets the bigger trees that are more important grow better. So, I'm trying to see. So. 
Um, we also sell peg racks, a lot of these out of the store. There's something we make out back. We get the pegs from uh, Frontier Forge in Kingfield, or Kingfield Wood Products. They're known as both. But we make the this part out back, and then we put the pegs in. And then we still sell Joe Parham CDs. Um, his grandson has kept that business going, and um, we sell a lot of his CDs still, even though he's no longer with us. But his grandson, Luke, is uh, still producing them and selling them. So. And he's still just as funny. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, he is. So this is the other uh, part of the produce coolers that we have utilized. For one thing, we couldn't get it out of the building. It's just too big to fit through the doors. So we thought about it and said, geez, we keep it on a pallet down there so we can move it around if we want to. But it is a great sweatshirt display. It's been the sweatshirt display for forever, I think. But uh, it makes a great spot to display them, and it works out well. So I'm trying to think what else. We have uh, other main products over here. Um, the balsam for hot pads. Um, this uh, comes from Prospect Harbor Soap Company. They make lotions and soap. Um, let's see. These soaps here are from Vermont, actually, but they're very nice. Very nice people. They buy product from us and vice versa. These uh, products here are made in New Hampshire, but they're hand done by a lady called Sophisticated Handcrafts out of southern New Hampshire. And then she has some matching pot holders that go with them. So we're working our way out to the fudge counter where we finally end up, the, the I'm sorry, the fudge finally ends up. <laughs> so. This corner is more of a kid's corner or a Red Sox corner. This stuff is probably not made in Maine, but it is printed. The t-shirts come from a company down in uh, Unity, Maine. But we're Red Sox fans, so we, and Patriots fans, so we have to sell some of that stuff locally. And then in the toy section, we have a, pro a company from Vermont that makes uh, wooden lots of different types of wooden toys and we get their products and sell them but um, mostly the fur the stuffed toys they have to come from outside of the country unfortunately there isn't anybody that really makes stuffed animals in the US anymore <laughs> so you have such unique very interesting products I'll be going around afterward and just okay. trying to yep. get some of them. And some, I mean, these train whistles are made in um, uh, the Ozarks from a company um, that we get actually set up next to at that Smoky Mountain gift show, Williams Ozark Wholesale. These are made in the USA, and they really do sound like a train. <laughs> and uh, I get those, and I get a few other things from them, those um, uh, slingshots and whistles I guess these are whistles with um, there's some here with compasses and some that are not with compasses. those have the compasses so if you're out it's a good scare a bear away type of thing or something so it's another benefit of your trade shows yeah you we also shop and you find at the trade things. shows yeah. for the store yes because yeah. awesome. while we're there selling we also have to look around for our own store so So our fudge counter is up here, and uh, as you can see, I've got it loaded up with different flavors for the summer. Some of the ones, it's hard to get a picture probably because of the glare here, but um, it's uh, where we display and sell the fudge. And we offer free tastes, so everybody that comes in the store, 
generally speaking, gets offered a free sample of fudge, whether they buy anything or not. <laughs> it's not required. <laughs> Very nice. For sure. I know I've had some. <laughs> Well, that's some of the rocky road you are me making, but as you can see, I need to put more out because it's going. And there's the black fly in the back with the chocolate chips. And just put out the fresh pumpkin pie this morning. And the blueberry, oops, the blueberry cheesecake signs upside down. <laughs> I know I have to come out, we have to come out in the front to make sure that we get the signs right side up. And this is the Sunday River and the Mount Abram, what we named after the mountains and kind of created ourselves. It's Panucci fudge with Heath Bar and Caramel. And the difference is the Mount Abram has walnuts, but not the Sunday River. Yeah, the other, the other thing we do make that I forgot about out back is walking sticks. Oh, they, uh, well, they were out back, but <laughs> it's hard to... These are the, actually what we would maybe call rejects. They're too skinny for our wholesale customers. So we put them out here as like, could use them for marshmallow sticks and carve them down or, or a little, a kid, these are strong enough for, but they're not really strong enough for a full fledged adult. Down here are the fancy ones, the more sturdier ones that we put the Thing on the bottom and we, we actually put a couple coats of polyurethane on these and these can say I had I hand burn these in with a burning thing Maine or whatever we have company the trap family lodge in Vermont buys several of them in the summer and they I have to put trap family lodge and uh, Cadia shops in uh, Bar Harbor that are in the um, in the uh, park down there they have us they buy about 300 of them in the beginning of the season and have Acadia or Cadillac Mountain put on so now, when you burn that in is it all one word or do you have to do it by letter I do it by letter because it's a it's a burning pen thing and I have to write it or print it in that is so. a lot of work. It takes me quite a while to do 300 <laughs> so so now do you do you boys make those no actually rick goes out and collects these <laughs> wow. it's moose wood um <laughs> it's the same do you kind ever of sleep do you guys ever yeah, sleep <laughs> sometimes <laughs> it's the same wood that they use to trim the birdhouses mm -hmm. so they need the thinner stuff so when you get one of these trees we use the thicker stuff for this and then if there's any little thinner branches or whatever they can use them on the birdhouses mm -hmm.